This video covers Power SDR KE9NS version 2.8.0.235 <clears throat> and everything since the last video, which was uh, .213. The first <clears throat> is in the setup. Cat control. The AI command, which is automatic information, <clears throat> used to be a single one because there was a single port. But now that we have multiple ports, you know, it's multiplexing everything across all these ports that uh, I needed an AI for every one of these ports because some programs can actually send a command to disable that. <coughs> now the AI command is for when you're running a PC program that does not automatically pull for information. So whenever I make a change in PowerSDR, <coughs> uh, like the VFO frequency changes, it'll automatically send an AI command through the port back to whatever's connected to the other end to let them know things have changed. So uh, it's, it's an automatic system. So I, I normally leave it enabled. The, uh, the next <coughs> is in the transverter. I upped the max from 99 gigahertz to 250 uh, and I've added a little treat right here for translated frequency so it automatically does the calculation and it just tells you what the translated frequency is going to be when you hold your mouse over there <coughs> and uh, for the for the bigger ranges if I go to uh, 1.2 centimeters I made it now where it automatically enlarges the VFO if you uh, go above you know 100, 100 gigahertz <coughs> because it needed room for the VFO and uh, that's under appearance and the larger VFO. So go back to uh, HF. You don't really need that, and you can go back to a smaller one. Give you more real estate if you're not using the full screen <coughs> like I'm using. The other thing I did is on the I have a VU5K module, and I I opened it up so that you could receive outside the two meter band a little bit out of the band <coughs> both. 2 meter 70 centimeter and then now when you launch the shortwave listing I just opened it up here so in these listings if you go down to the bottom I added like the weather channels and around northern Illinois that's uh, weather channel 4 that's an FM station and then I've uh, on the lower end I added the marine channels and so forth in here but then on the lower end I had I went down to the uh, uh, NOAA satellites the, um, <coughs> when they're in view I added those frequencies to the shortwave list the next is uh, let's go back out of here is um, let me turn that shortwave listing off and then uh, in the scanner <coughs> I've fixed up the scanner a little bit uh, so when you type here this is for memories and this is for shortwave listings here so now the memories here it comes from the memory here oops, uh, comes from this so I normally I type these common names in here for the group name like two meter repeaters so when I type in here I can say two meter <coughs> that'll get me everything and then if I add to it like RE for repeater uh, it'll narrow it down <coughs> it puts everything on here and I can open that up uh, and the X's here mean it's gonna bypass this when we do a scan <coughs> and it's the squelch break it's based on uh, not whether the squelch is on and off but whether or not it actually uh, does a squelch break in this case it'll pause four seconds and wait until the channel's clear for at least 40 se uh, four seconds the pause on squelch would be it would just wait four seconds one time and then go on so give you a sampling of everything that's on um, on the frequencies that you're that you're trying to scan so it's just gonna go through and it'll avoid the ones with the X and move around now I could stop it I can actually click on these and just go right to it it'll automatically load up all the information from the memory <coughs> and take me right there uh, if I right click it'll put an X to block out the channel and then do it again it, it uh, removes it if you hold your mouse over here you'll get the information on what to do and then the wheel click is usually VFOB in this case I have ARCS2 so it's gonna enable ARCS2 because I've got a, another setting in here 
under RX2 where I'm going to have it if I send a spot uh, to VFOB it'll automatically turn on RX2 and I can have it turn on VAC2 if I'm using the, the VAC for my, my speaker, my microphone, you know the computer for your speaker microphone but I'm not, I'm not going to turn it on but it would automatically turn on the VAC2 so <clears throat> if I want to send uh, something to one of the other VFOs I can uh, click on uh, one of these with the mouse wheel and it'll take it to VFOB. Now you can't run dual with two meters. It's just a single, you know, it's not, it's a single uh, module in there, so you can't run it like that. So, um, but anyway, uh, that is the modifications I've made to the um, to the scanner. <coughs> the next is when Arx2 is enabled. <coughs> excuse me. Um, <coughs> the uh, it's going to choose only oh, to get out of here. It's going to um, uh, open up sliders for ARCs too. So you can move it around, and I can also change the zoom independently of uh, VFOA. <coughs> Centering. Hold your mouse. You can see if I wheel click, it'll do a center automatically and then the same with with these if I do a wheel click it will change the uh, and you hold your mouse over there it'll let you know but a wheel click uh, will do the zoom you know 0.5 times 1 times 2 and then the uh, the right on there is like and this is times 100 that's times 10 times 20 times 40 with a right click for VFO A so that's the arcs 2 and the spotting. Well, let me disable this and I'll go into the spotting. And same thing with spotting, uh, mouse wheel click. Uh, if I click on one of these, that'll take it to VFO B. And in this case, it automatically turned on um, RX2 because I did a mouse wheel click. Click on that too. So, um, uh, what, what the other thing I added though was an automatic pause. If I go into this area here, it automatically pauses. So if I, there's a lot of spots on the screen, <coughs> it'll automatically stay paused. As long as I don't come off the screen, if I come off, then it unpauses. But right now it freezes it. Now it will still, the spots will still appear on the screen here. Uh, it will still appear as the dots on the world map. But uh, um, but it freezes the display here so that I can take my time and uh, choose whichever one I want and go to that go to that spot. The other thing I've added just recently is the uh, F2 layer and the D layer. Uh, if the world map is on, you click that and it'll load up the NOAA. Right now it's clear, D layer is clear, but it'll load it up and then I can also do the F. Two layer it's from the Space Weather uh, <coughs> Department in um, Australia. Put this map together, and this is updated every 15 minutes. The the PowerSDR ups, updates it every 30 minutes, and it's telling you the status of the F2 layer in real time, virtual real time. And that is about it.